Now, before we get into the breakdown of Bad Batch S3, E6 through 7, Infiltration, Extraction, spoiler warning, spoiler warning, here we go. Let's get right into the review of this two-part episode, which felt very Clone Wars-esque, am I right? Yeah, no, we weren't watching Clone Wars. It's not 2008. This is Bad Batch Season 3, and this is why it is great. It did, it felt like a mashing of the two franchises. You got the, you know, the family side, the Imperial lore, all the crazy stuff, the Galactic Emperor and the Imperials are doing at this point in time, but you also got kind of the, the Clone Wars vibe through Rex and his camp over on Teth, so I appreciated them marrying the two franchises together in this episode. It, it felt awesome. It was it felt very Clone Wars, but it also had that bad batch appeal that we've come to know and love, so really digging the just the overall vibes and feel that these two episodes gave us. I think they featured some great stealth with these shadow troopers, clone X, whatever you want to call them, you get to see just how highly skilled they are at their jobs and why the Empire is deploying them throughout the galaxy. I also like getting some more lore on them. So in this episode, unlike last week, we, we did check in on the Imperial side of the Bad Batch narrative. We learned a little bit more about these shadow troopers and who is in charge of them and, and how they become these shadow troopers. So much so that we learned Crosshair was supposed to... to become one and they kind of recognize crosshair so there's interesting things in his backstory in these shadow troopers backstory there so i felt like this two-parter not only moved the main overarching narrative of the season along okay we got the clones closer to figuring out like yeah tantus is bad we got to take it out but there at the end, Rex kind of is reminding Hunter, like, hey, dude, you can't keep Omega safe until you figure out why she is so important to the Empire. They clearly don't care about Crosshair. They're only coming after Omega. So why? Until you figure that out, you all are not going to be safe. So we did move things along over the next, what, eight, nine episodes. It's very clear near now what the clones will be doing. We're going to have Rex and his group. They're going to be continuing the fight against the Empire and trying to free their brothers on Tantus. And then you're going to have the Bad Batchers trying to figure out why exactly Hemlock needs Omega so bad. So in terms of narrative movement, lots of good progress was made in this two-parter i also want to touch on the fact that omega is more and more becoming like crosshair so much so she's doing his toothpick routine in this episode so i thought that was kind of neat i also appreciated how the regular clones responded to crosshair hauser in particular you gotta remember there's a lot of bad blood still between the regular clones that have defected and then crosshair someone that remained loyal to the empire um, but, it, you know, we kind of got that arc resolved by the end, and it just showed more growth on Crosshair's part, as well as those around him, all realizing, like, geez, we are, we are in some poop here with this Empire stuff, and uh, it, life is not looking good for us clones. And then, obviously, uh, really to, to put the cherry on top on this two-parter is the wolf encounter at the end. Just him and Rex kind of having that standoff as as former commanders, captains, and you could see the respect between the two, and you had to appreciate. I was kind of surprised that Wolf just kind of let it go. What's that going to mean for Wolf in his tenure with the Empire? What's it going to mean for you know Rex and company? I, I thought it was a very interesting exchange. Loved the visuals of it again. The you know the wide shots just showing showing the distance between those clones that have defected and those clones still working for the Empire. So overall, great little two-parter. Would have loved to maybe check back in on Tantus a bit directly, but I'm glad we still got some Tantus lore via the Hemlock reveal of him being in charge of the Shadow Troopers. A little bit of a critique about this episode. I will say at some parts it was way too dark. Like we're getting Game of Thrones level dark. So color wise not the brightest in certain scenes. And therefore you couldn't really tell what was happening. Who was dying. Uh, but outside of that really enjoyed these two episodes. Alright let's get into some of the top moments from this dual episode run here. I'm just going to start with checking in with Rex, seeing this his clone compound on Teth. It's interesting that it's on Teth. This is a location that was used in the Clone Wars movie, the first ever introduction to Rex and the clones. And it's the same Bomar Monk temple that Asajj had, um, you know, Jabba's son locked up in trying to uh, convince the Huts that the Jedi stole his kid and all that fun stuff from the movie. So... 
I, I just enjoyed seeing this is what Rex has been up to. I mean, he does have an organized rogue clone movement, and it was good to check in and see some of the named clones that we've, you know, come to know and love over the seasons of Bad Batch and just uh, the Clone Wars, like Hauser, Greer, Samson, Fireball, Nemec, Gregor. So it was good to see where their base of operation is at. And the other top moment, at least from episode six here, is just the Shadow X or the Clone X Troopers ship. Look at this thing. I mean, this is the most unimperial, ungalactic republic looking ship we've seen to date. I mean, it's got the the angular vibes of the old Jedi cruisers, but I just I really dug this ship. It, it seems specially equipped for these shadow troopers to go out on their one person assassination missions with all the remote controls that he had on his arm there and you know the ability to to wake it and to put it to sleep it, it just i don't know it's one of the cooler looking ships and it, it was surprising to me to see a a shadow clone operative piloting it other top moments from episode seven you had to appreciate crosshair versus the second clone x trooper who is this trooper i don't know i mean nick and i before the season even started we cautioned everyone against it being tech i feel like that may have been validated now especially that crosshair revealed to the other clones like listen they they tried to turn me into one of these shadow troopers clone x troopers and it didn't work because i am a defective clone so hopefully that eliminates tech from being this trooper but Nick and I did predict, predict early on before the season that this particular Shadow Trooper, the one that they're focusing on, clearly they even showed him survive, is going to be Commander Cody. And I'm still kind of rolling with that, especially after we saw this particular Shadow Trooper really go for a Vibro Blade and use it quite skillfully, which I believe Cody also used in Season 2 of the Bad Batch, but I did like the fight between these two. It's like they almost know each other. I mean, heck, maybe the Shadow Trooper could be a clone of Crosshair that's not defective, and therefore they could do the brainwashing. But either way, it was an evenly matched battle. I really appreciated when the Shadow Trooper was drowning Crosshair. It almost provided a, a, a reflection shot, almost like this Shadow Trooper was seeing himself in Crosshair. Or maybe Crosshair was seeing himself in the Shadow Trooper. You know, is is that Crosshair in the Shadow Trooper? Like I said, is it a clone? Who knows? But definitely a good little fight. Got a little tense. Was Crosshair going to die? He s lives to fight another day. And then to wrap out the top moments here, I really appreciate, like I said, the Wolf and Rex standoff. In particular, this widescreen shot. We saw it earlier when Rex, uh, I'm sorry, when Crosshair, Omega, and then Wrecker and Hunter reunited to kind of show the distance between the two factions. And, and it was used expertly again here to show the distance between the two factions. I just, I really liked this conversation. It didn't have to come to blows or anyone getting shot. It was just, listen, like, hey, brother, you know me. I know you. Do the right thing. Think it through, Wolf. Think it through. And Wolf did. Let him go. Who knows what that, that's going to mean for Wolf. At some point, he's going to have to kind of reunite with Rex anyways because of Star Wars Rebels and we know him, Gregor, and Rex end up together. But I thought this was a very interesting detente and it was intriguing how it ended. It's like Wolf could kind of see that Rex is not not BSing him. All right, in terms of the eggs and references, again, eggs, pretty uh, ridiculous in Bad Batch so far, as in not many, but we did get plenty of references. How about all those clones, Hauser, Greer, Samson, Fireball, Nemec, Gregor, of course. Uh, we also saw GS8 again and her Senator Singh of Raxus. Remember, he used to be a Separatist. And, of course, they ran into Senator Chuchi, who was in the Bad Batch Season 2. I mentioned Teth, which was featured in the Clone Wars movie. In particular, this exact monastery is where Asajj Ventress kind of had the baby hut locked up in their plan to make the huts think that the Jedi kidnapped them and all that fun stuff. So it was cool to see Rex kind of reusing it for his base of operations. When Rex is interrogating the first Shadow Trooper, he throws out Daro. Daro was a location from Season 1, The Bad Batch, where they rescued Gregor from. And then, of course, an easy one here, the return of Commander Wolf. The interesting thing here is that he's able to keep his stylized clone armor so who knows what that means and like i said who knows what his fate is going to be when he gets back to 
the Empire now that he let them go. Notice there was no TK units when he made that choice, so maybe all those clones will just let that ride. When Wolf is talking to Rex, you hear him say, hey, I thought you died when a ship went down, and what he was referencing was the fantastic end of the Clone Wars when him and Ahsoka essentially have to take on all of the 332nd after Order 66, and she frees Rex from the chip. That's them. Uh, that, that was the ship that Wolf was talking about that obviously crashes, and we have that fantastic ending moment from the Clone Wars on that planet. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this breakdown. Don't forget, we'll be doing it deep style tonight on the Star Wars Time Show. Make sure to tune in, youtube.com slash Star Wars Time Show, because there's always time for Star Wars Time. Don't forget to like, sub, comment, do what you got to do. We'll see you next week for another SWTS breakdown of The Bad Batch Season 3.